Find product links below and hundreds more videos on my channel. You recording? Yeah, I'm not. Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Netsan, I'm a filmmaker and photographer. And today I wanted to show you the new version of the X-Cam. I uh, had version one and I sold that and got version two, which is the version that has these uh, sort of fold up legs where you sort of, uh, you can fold them up for quicker travel. So that's quite nice. And uh, it also means that while you're traveling with it, there you don't have like you don't have to remove these weights, like you don't have to unscrew them like you did with the previous one, and that means that you don't have like weights just sort of loose in your bag. So that's that's nice. Now, the main thing that makes this an interesting buy is that it's very very compact. Now, uh, if you've seen my work before, if you've seen my YouTube channel, you'd know that I use a lot of these things. I use a lot of various different ones, and I've reviewed a lot of different ones, and I like to use them a lot in my work. And for my own work, I've used mainly Glidecam, and then after that I've reviewed a bunch of other ones, and I've sort of used them, tried them, etc. So, regarding size, I have a few of my own uh, stabilizers here, and then the uh, Lang, which is my uh, my cameraman right now, Stafford, it's his Lang. So I'm going to give you a little quick um, size comparison so you get an idea. This is the smallest glide cam, um, except I think they have like a really, uh, they might have a smaller one, um, I think right now they do, uh, but this is like from the HD series, the ones that actually have a proper adjustment on the top plate. Um, this is the smallest, and then so it's definitely smaller and lighter than the glide cam, and the glide cam is the smallest of the other ones I own. So um, here we have. Stafford's laying and uh, so pretty again pretty big difference and again weight uh, quite a big weight difference and a lot of you will want to know about the monocam of course so again quite a big difference so that's where this thing excels in size and just sort of travelability and again the light weight makes it very easy to fly around for hours with my uh, glide cam you know, as an experienced shooter, someone who's used it a lot and uh, got used to the weight of it, I can shoot for up to around about seven hours with an NEX camera. With a 5D, it gets even heavier. So every place I can save weight, I'm very happy with. Um, so this is a pretty interesting unit, pretty, uh, pretty all right. You know, it's not perfect, but um, pretty good considering it's the smallest stabilizer. I, it's as, as far as I know. Um, the smallest and uh, so or at least one of the smallest so yeah pretty all right pretty nice and uh, okay so there's uh, things that I like about it so first of all it flies pretty well I know you guys are gonna ask me is it as good as whatever the other ones that are a little more expensive so like the the glide cam the mono cam they are better so th there is there is a little bit of an improvement there with regards to flying quality but this is still usable. I've actually posted some uh, an example with this, um, and uh, I'll post some more, sort of showing you what, what you can do with this. So uh, basically, you can use it and get shots with it, but there's a few things you need to remember. First of all, you need to uh, have a, a quicker drop time with this, and so right now I have it around, I would say, one second-ish. And um, then you would want to also be controlling it with your second hand, and uh, as you move, you want to make sure that you're controlling, you're making sure very gently with your other hand, making sure that you're controlling the direction that it's going in. And uh, that's because there's a little bit of motion coming through from the handle. So as you can see, when I move it, the, the motion goes through to the stabilizer. So it does eliminate shake. So the shake isn't go coming through, but some of the motion is. So, um, but but little micro shakes aren't going to come through, so that's where it gives us stability. But just if you were to use just one hand, then it would be difficult to sort of aim and, and get it to sort of just aim straight. And so with, with two hands, you're then able to just control where you want it to aim. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty okay. Uh, again, like I said, there is an improvement with the, um, with the other ones, specifically uh, the monocam, which I've recommended uh, quite a lot, and the glide cam, which is great. So, um, another thing that I, I uh, don't particularly like about this is that it is more difficult to balance, but it's not impossible. 
but just compared to the other ones, it is a little more difficult. But still, you know, it does have sort of it, it's okay, not not the worst thing I've seen, um, and it does bal it does balance pretty well. Just it takes a little bit longer, and it's quite a complicated system. So I'm going to explain it so that if you get this, you know, sort of what you're doing. And so uh, basically, the quick release system is a bit strange. You've got uh, these two, which l are the first quick release, the first safety system, and then the second safety is that, this little screw. So then you can remove this uh, plate. And the plate has a lot of mounting holes. And um, personally, I would have uh, maybe, I think, preferred a sliding uh, plate. But, you know, this is OK. Uh, but I, I think, you know, I prefer the sliding plate from the um, from the laying, but you can always add your own quick release plate on here, which slides back onto the forwards. That's what I'd probably recommend you do. Now, uh, so you close these two and then lock this one down. And then what you've got is you've got these two knobs right there. So you've got, uh, and, and both of these, it's, it's a sort of very strange system. Basically, as you unscrew these, you can, or as you unscrew one of these, you can then screw the other one in the same direction to push the plate in that direction. So for example, if I were to if I were to uh, unscrew this one, I can now screw this one in the same direction to push the plate in the direction I want it to go. So it's something you have to get used to. It's kind of a, a strange system. And then once you've pushed it the right amount, then you bring both of them to a, a locking position. Um, so sort of you bring both of them to the center. And then you have a secondary left-right adjustment, so sort of a fine-tuning adjustment using this uh, this thing right here. So it's just like a little weight that can move from left to right by screwing it uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. And um, so yeah, I mean that's that works pretty well as an additional um, an additional adjustment. Uh, but ideally, I would have preferred just one just one adjustment. And then for forward to back, you can move this. So it's just a little thing and you spin it one way or the other to move it forward and back. So that works pretty all right, but it doesn't have that much of a motion. Uh, it doesn't have that much of a, a range of motion. So that means that you do have to get, you definitely have to get the right hole in the uh, plate in order to you know, position this properly. So um, it does, yeah, it does take a little bit longer to balance. And so um, that's something that you know, once you've balanced it, you don't really have to balance it again. Um, again, because of the uh, because of the quicker drop time, it's not as sensitive to an imperfect balance. And so uh, it also means with a, with a quicker drop time that if you if you didn't use two hands, you would get a, a bit of a pendulum motion. So as you can see, it's sort of tilting a little bit um, as I move it. And so if you, that's again, you use two hands with this and it's perfectly fine. Um, and you do have to sort of le learn to, you know, how much pressure to put on it as you move it. And um, it doesn't do amazingly well at moving very fast because it's bottom heavy. And um, so you could have this a little less bottom heavy than this to reduce the pendulum motion, but then it gets more picky with regards to uh, the way it's balanced. So the closer it is to having um, basically the slower the drop time, so I've slowed it down a little bit now, the slower the drop time, the more accurate it will want your balance to be. So that's again, that's where this thing just is a little less, um, you get a little less performance than the bigger ones, but what you gain is something that's very, very good for travel. So, uh, and, and still something usable. I'm gonna post uh, some shots from this. And um, so you can get an idea of like how usable it is for you. I mean, it's something that you could do shots with, not perfect. It's not something that I would use if I, you know, um, for something like a narrative, this could work pretty well. If you're able to like try that shot once or twice until you get it right, and um, you know, then, then that could work well. Or if you're traveling, and obviously you're not doing some big, um, like a wedding or something, I don't know, then if you're just traveling, then this could work really, really well because it's so lightweight and you could just keep it, you know, really easily in the bag. 
and um, so that could work, you know, for, for shots while you're traveling and stuff. But uh, again, like I said, you do get an improvement with the um, with the monocam. So if you're okay with a larger size, then uh, you know you can go with that. Or if you want something in the middle, then uh, the uh, the glide cam is pretty similar in size, kind of. It is heavier, it is bigger, it doesn't fold down anywhere near as compact, but it's somewhere in the middle between the two. As you can see, in all directions, it's much bigger. And by the way, this does come with a lot of additional um, weights, and it can balance with a 5D, uh, or, or, I mean, whatever it can balance with, I think mostly any DSLR. So, um, so with this one, with this NEX, uh, it's an NEX and a grip that doesn't weigh very much. And so, um, so I've just got one weight on each. And, uh, okay, so I think that's basically it. It's a uh, pretty all right, you know, it's an all right stabilizer. And, you know, it's not perfect, but if you're looking for something this size that can fly a 5D, that can fly an NEX camera, then this could be a good option. And so I uh, hope you found this helpful. I hope this has answered all your questions. Uh, now, um, actually one more thing that I wanted to go over regarding was uh, how to um, move this up and down. And that's just, you unlock it from here and then you move this in order to, you sort of just twist this in order to change the balance as you saw me do earlier. So as I spin this, this moves further down and then that's how you control how bottom heavy it is. So, okay guys. Um, the uh, the balancing for this with regards to how far the weights are from uh, the camera body is basically the same as any other stabilizer. You want to aim for sort of a, a one to two second drop time, uh, depending on, you know, sort of your style and, and preference. And uh, it works well. Hopefully you like the footage and uh, you'll get an idea of how good this could work for you. So thanks for watching. Any questions, ask me below. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.